thank you all for inviting me. I appreciate it very much. Yeah, this is this is the book I wrote, The Common Man. Um, what what I what I want to get into later is I, I try to come up with all these different titles of what I want to come up with. The end of the Constitution is near. Uh, you know, all these dramatic titles and things are not what they appear. And I think I'm just going to go back to the original one I came up with was what happened in 1913. Um, just by way of background, um, I am a Plymouth graduate, uh, went off to the Army, enlisted, and went uh, here stateside, here in Vietnam, here in Germany. Uh, came back to Western, and where I determined to pursue truth. And so I took up political science and philosophy, read Socrates and all that good stuff, and got out. I was going to become a politician. My, my, my goal back in the day was to become president. And I uh, got married right when I got out of college. And I still hadn't found a good book. And my wife said, why don't you read this one? And I opened it up to one of the books in it called Proverbs. <laughs> and I said, whoa, this is good stuff. I'm going back to the beginning, read it all the way through. The time I got through, I became a believer in Jesus Christ. I've tried to read the Bible every time through now, about 35 times or so I've read it through. I try to read it through every year. Um, still don't know, it's always, as you all know, it's still refreshing, always something new, you can't even remember what you read a year ago when you come back. It's always wonderful. Um, so then, uh, wife hated politics, went back to school two more years, uh, the accounting and business corps, and went on to become a CPA, and did that, left to public accounting, and became a financial executive all the years in healthcare, in service, and education and manufacturing. So I, I have been around too much. And the first half of my book is actually is God at home and that's what it talks about all the adventures. And one thing is when you see truth, not always good things are going to happen. You start digging and people get uneasy and they don't like it, you get fired and I mean there's just all sorts of <laughs> not nice things that happen. Um, so then uh, then after 9-11 I got a copy of the Quran. I thought I would see what what that was about, and in the meantime, I started journaling, and so I, I read the Quran, compared it to the Bible, and people were kind of warning, oh, you better watch out, and I, by that time, I've been through the Bible 25 times or so, it's like, if I don't know what the real deal is by now, I'm <laughs> sunk anyway, right? so, hi, Patty, and um, so, uh, one thing led to another, and I, and I journal about that, and, and I've got a section here, one chapter is titled the Quran, to compare it to the Bible, and I, I think that alone is worth the price of the book, quite honestly. Um, but as time went on after 9-11, then we got Obama elected sharp turn to the left, even sharper turn to the left. Um, then I uh, went downtown to Kalamazoo in the spring of 09 there, Gene Clem had a rally. I thought maybe a dozen people would be there at the tea party, and there were 800 to 900, 1,000. I was shocked. And just regular folks, just like you all. And this whole nonsense about race, you know, they, they do that to divide us, you know that, right? That's all. It, like Glenn Beckler said, it's not a conspiracy when it's out in the open. Well, it's out in the open, so we, let's just be open. We know what they're doing, they know what we're doing, and let's just um, be real about it. Um, so then one thing led to another, along with Patty and Gene Clam, Tony Dougal, Scott Arnett, we became the founding uh, members of the Southwest Michigan uh, Patriots. And then I, I started looking, we wanted a smaller government. Well, what does that mean? How do we legally get a smaller government? I don't want to put my faith in man. I don't care if it's Sarah Palin, whoever, they get up there, the next person comes along, they go the other way. And I've seen this. When, when you look back, the more I got into it, the more frustrating it is, I guess. You get, uh, uh, like Upton, he votes for the, the drug health plan, no money to pay it. Then he votes against uh, Obamacare, which I'm against both of them. You know, we have the money that the government shouldn't be in. You still go back to the Constitution. What's this all about? And the more you dig, the more frustrating it gets. And so I decided to run against Upton. On the last election, I finished third, and I ran as a member of the uh, United uh, U.S. Taxpayers Party, which is Michigan's affiliate of the National Constitution Party. And now I'm first vice chairman of the state party. Having said all that, what happened in 1913? We kind of think, well, this is new, this redistribution of wealth and all that. It's been going on a long time. I can detail on this one, I'm going to get into it in 99 years to be exact. And what happened in 1913? Three things happened. Ratification of the 16th Amendment, ratification of the 17th Amendment, creation of the Federal Reserve. By accident, 
No. That's, again, let's get it out in light. Let's be real. It wasn't by accident. There are people behind the scenes who want to bring down the United States. It's just a fact. They do. We know that. Let's acknowledge it. What's the 16th Amendment? Anybody know what the 16th Amendment is? Income tax. Income tax. Made the income tax legal. Founding fathers made it illegal. They thought it was immoral to tax a man's labor. But now we know better than the founding fathers. Uh huh. Well, if we didn't have a federal income tax, and we did not until 1913, how did the nation, how did the federal government get its revenue? Three means. Excise taxes and tariffs and apportionment. Excise taxes, today's world, you buy gas, you pay for roads. Sounds fair? I don't think anybody has a problem with that. Tariffs. Again, let's cite an example today. Let's say that Nike's making shoes overseas and they cost 10 bucks to make. Those same shoes are 40 bucks here to make. The feds are supposed to tax that 30 bucks, that difference. So that when you come over here, you got a competitive playing field. That's not happening, and you can see where our jobs are going, right overseas. And the Chinese now, we have, last year we spent, to them, 360 billion. They spent to us 90. We lost 270 billion, one-way street, they're building up their military, they're challenging us around the world, and we even now get some of our military parts from them, and they're faulty. It's like, this is insane, folks. The country has lost it. Our leadership has lost it. It's not our government. Our government's fine. It's the people in the government that we've got to replace. So then apportionment taxes. Apportionment tax has never been used, what, but it's in the Constitution. What it's supposed to provide is this, is that if Michigan's got 3.3% of the population, and if the feds need $3 trillion, they're supposed to tax Michigan 3.3% of $3 trillion, which is $99 million. Now, if you've got $99 billion leaving the state when our state budget can't balance at $40 billion, you know people aren't going to like that. You know it's going to be so obvious what's going on. They're not going to do it. They want income taxes. They can hide, pay all the shows, uh, you know, uh, help out their buddies, get elected, and who funds them? Big business, big government, right? 17th Amendment. Any idea what that is? Yeah, yeah that's when the states lost their representation. Right, states lost their representation. Until 1913, the, the U.S. Senators were elected by the state legislatures as part of states' rights. The representatives were always elected by the people, but the senators were supposed to look out for the states, and therefore they refer back to the state legislatures. Levin and Stavron, who do they report to? How do you report to 10 million people? You can't do it. It's a gravy train. Why don't you get in, get your fellows, friends there, giving you all the money, and keep getting elected, and, and you're in there forever. The other thing in 1930, and by the way, the Wall Street Journal uh, had an article a year and a half ago says we should repeal the 16th and repeal the 17th because of those very reasons I just said. The other thing that happened in 1913 was the Federal Reserve was created. What was the national debt in 1913? Three billion. It's grown 5,000 times since then. And what is our, um, what's the national debt? 15 trillion. Just over 15, right? 15.2 trillion or so right now. How much has it grown since Republicans took control of the House a year ago? Uh, over, just over a trillion. Weren't they supposed to stop it? Yeah. That all spending bills are supposed to originate in the House. That's the Republicans, Republicans control the House. They got the checkbook. So what's happening? Why don't they do it? It's grown another trillion. And What's the national, what's the interest on the national debt now? Yearly interest. $286 billion. That's $800 million a day. Today, we will spend another $800 million financing interest only on the national debt. Now, they had the, uh, the senator, or the, the fellow from Wisconsin, Ryan, he proposed that, you know, we cut this $5.2 trillion or something, and people were, oh my gosh, over 10 years, oh, terrible. What they're really saying now, we're, we're growing 1.2 trillion a year. In 10 years, that's 12 trillion, right? If he cuts 5 trillion, it's still grown 7 trillion. You see where this is going? Now, 